Okay, so in this quick video, we're going to go over the basics of the carbon cycle. Now, the picture shows the greenhouse effect. Now, please do not think that there is an actual glass building surrounding planet Earth. That's just silly. But the picture is kind of implying that our atmosphere acts like a greenhouse. Our atmosphere is made up of a, a lot of carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide acts like a greenhouse to trap heat. Well, we're going to go into that in a little more detail in a little bit. Let's go ahead and get started though with the carbon cycle. So when we look at the carbon cycle, one thing to remind ourselves is that carbon, the element called carbon, carbon is the basis of organic molecules. And if you recall, there's four broad categories of organic molecules, the first being proteins. The picture hopefully can remind you from earlier in the school year that proteins are made from uh, long chains of amino acids. And we think of foods that are high in protein. Fish are high in protein. Eggs are high in protein. Steaks are high in protein. Another uh, organic molecule category are carbohydrates. The, the, the picture you see here is C6H12O6. If you want to count up the carbons, there should be six of them, 12 hydrogens and six oxygens in the picture. But this is glucose, which is a carbohydrate made by the process of photosynthesis. We think of foods that are high in carbohydrates, perhaps pastas come into mind and fruits come into mind. A, a third category of organic molecules would be lipids. The picture here shows a phospholipid bilayer. It's the outer boundary of cells. So the basic unit of life, cells, the outer layer of cells is made from lipids. And then when we think of the fourth category of organic molecules, I hope we remember nucleic acids. The picture here shows a DNA helix, a double helix DNA molecule. So I hope I've given you some really good reasons why uh, a knowledge of the carbon cycle is really important. Let's go ahead and go through the stages. So when we look at the stages of the carbon cycle, let's start off with plants and producers. In my animation, we have a plant absorbing carbon dioxide. Plants have little tiny microscopic pores on the underside of their leaves called stomata. And when these stomata, when these pores are open, they can take in carbon dioxide. It's one of the, it's one of the, requ it's one of the needs, one of the requirements of photosynthesis, along with water, along with sunlight. So they'll take in carbon dioxide and they'll produce glucose. Glucose, the formula C6H12O6, is created via photosynthesis. Well, now the, the carbon in the form of glucose is simply going to move up the food chain. So when we now focus on animals, animals represented by the rabbit and the wolf in the animation here, glucose simply moves up the food chain. In the animation, glucose is going from the plant to the rabbit. Well, that's because the rabbit is eating the plant. It's taking glucose from the plant. Well, it simply moves up the food chain. The wolf is getting glucose from the rabbit in the animation because the wolf is eating the rabbit. So the glucose simply moves up the food chain. Well, let's not forget that animals uh, give off carbon dioxide. So in the animation, the rabbit, the wolf, they're exhaling carbon dioxide. And if you look, we've already got a little cycle. We've already got a little carbon cycle in the animation, and we're, and we're not 100% finished. But you can already see the beginning here of the carbon cycle. Well, let's move on to the mushrooms in the picture. So the mushrooms in the picture are symbolic of decomposers, fungus, and bacteria. And so, like it says, decomposers obtain glucose by feeding on the dead. So in the animation, glucose is going from the wolf, from the rabbit, and from the plant. Because when wolves, rabbits, plants, and other organisms die, their remains become uh, food for decomposers, such as fungus, such as bacteria. Well, fungus and bacteria, they also give off carbon dioxide because they have uh, mitochondria, or I should say the fungus has mitochondria, bacteria do not, but uh, th th all organisms give off carbon dioxide as a form of waste here. And so when 
the decomposers feed on the dead remains, they also give off carbon dioxide. It's part of their cellular waste. And so you can see we have a nice carbon cycle going in this animation. Well, there's one more uh, fact that we need to mention briefly. And so the last factor I want to mention briefly is the human contribution. In the animation, we have a factory in the background giving off a bunch of carbon dioxide. So the human contribution to the carbon cycle is that excess carbon dioxide is being released into the atmosphere from the burning of fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and natural gas. We burn coal, oil, and natural gas, of course, to produce electricity. Electricity for homes, for factories, and so this is producing a whole lot of carbon dioxide that is going into the atmosphere. And so the Earth has never seen really this large amount of carbon dioxide being released into the atmosphere. So right now our, our, our concern is that the carbon cycle is out of balance. Not only are we releasing too much carbon dioxide into the environment, but we're also cutting down deforesting trees and other plants that can take carbon dioxide out of the air. And so some of the some of the fears is that this could upset the climate patterns around the world, causing a problem called global warming or climate change. This video is not going to go into global warming and climate change, but I have another video on that topic if you want to if, if you're curious about it. So if we look at this uh, animation right here, this is kind of just a summary animation. Uh, you can see hopefully a neat little cycle going on between the producers, between the animals, and between the decomposers. So this is just kind of the wrap up here, the, the wrap up animation showing the carbon cycle. And so here we have a little practice quiz. If you're in my biology class, pause the video and bring me your answers either before school or after school. I'd love to check them for accuracy. Go ahead and pause the video. Good luck.